I think if you don't look back on your past and cringe, that means that you haven't gone through a period of improvement. All right, welcome back into the Fortified Pod. This is technically episode two. I'm your host, Tim Fournier, alongside my two good buddies from high school. You want to introduce yourself first? You're kind of a re- – you've been on here before. I've been on here of. before. It's going to be a fun one. We haven't really talked about life before, more uh, sports, so I'm excited yeah. to you know, change the subject a little bit. Yeah. So it should be fun, Dave. Yeah. Zach's back. And I'm Dave. Uh, not much to say other than four letters, D-A-V-E, I think. Uh, but I'm excited to talk about some stuff as, as well today. Uh, this is the first time being on this podcast, so never really done it. I've listened to a lot of them, but never spoken in front of a camera to this extent. So hmm. looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, guys, for hopping on. So I think the first thing, I'm going to throw maybe a little curveball for what we were expecting to talk about. We're just going to see where this goes. I want to kind of get your, your two opinions as two of my closest friends. What do you guys think of, like, my whole social media experience? My whole journey, if you want to call it that. I'll start. I think it's great. Like, I think, you know, obviously, you know, everyone has, at some extent, to to make a living somehow. You know, get a job, you know, make some money. Um, And obviously, everyone says, you know, you never really, like, you want to find a job where you're never, you feel like you're never working. You know, like, you love Mm -hmm. your job. Um, But a lot of time, people really don't have that opportunity. Uh, a lot of people don't end up liking their jobs and stuff like that and don't really like the stuff they're doing on a daily basis. But doing something like what you're doing kind of frees you up and allows you to you know, do things that you otherwise wouldn't do in life and show a side of yourself to people that you wouldn't yeah. otherwise be able to show. Um, and a lot of people, you know, and I give you a lot of credit, a lot of people don't have really the nuts to, to go out and express yourself in that way. I know that's something I know a lot of my friends and I have talked about, you know, starting stuff like this. And we've talked forever about doing podcasts and stuff like mm-hmm. that and, and going online and a lot of people make good livings doing that, but it, the first thing you have to do is really get past that wall and you know suck it up and, and not be afraid of what people think of you. Definitely. And so I think it's a huge thing. I think it takes a lot of guts, and I think you know whether you get a, a trillion views or, or not many at all, I still think that you know putting yourself out there and creating just content. And for someone like you, where you're you're going into a, a field that you know like a professional sports, and you never know, you could go into like a journalism or something yeah. like that, you know. You never know. So it's always good to, to build up something like this and, and add it to a resume, but it's also fun on the side um, and just allows you to talk about, you know, whether it's life or sports, stuff that you don't really talk about, you know, at, at a job or anything like that, you know? So I think it really, is, it's got to be really fun and it's cool that you broke that wall and you're able to do this stuff. Yeah, I think it's really important. This is something I kind of talked about a little bit in the first episode. I think I mentioned it a little bit. I think it's really important to, no matter what you're doing, maybe it's a more traditional nine to five, maybe you, you know, have a job so you can pay the bills or anything like that. But I think it's important to kind of keep a sense of, I call it preserving your autonomy, where you have something on the side on your own that you're building and you can kind of, you know, flex that creative muscle because I think people kind of throw that away too much in childhood. I think Dave, you're someone that can speak to that in terms of, you know, keeping that creative side, having a passion that you work on. And I think not enough people even realize that they need a passion, don't do enough work in finding a passion Mm -hmm. that is maybe not necessarily your job. Maybe it is, but something that you keep doing, flexing that muscle and keeping that in your life. And I think you can definitely speak to that. Yeah, I would say like we have, I guess, probably more than two parts of our brains, but I like to think of it as – you know, you have your day to day things you got to do, you got to get done. Mm-hmm. And, and then you kind of have your, your leisurely activities, so to say. Um, but I think the most productive leisurely activity is being creative, creating things. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think we we are here to create to an extent, um, one way or the other, whether you're, you know, blogging or you're making music or you're creating something and I think that's really important to have a sense of individuality because when you're making your own things and and uh kind of like you said flexing that muscle Mm -hmm. it makes a lot of the other mundane activities of a day-to-day life a little bit better I Um, think so for sure and I would just say like kind of to add to Zach's point or to circle back to what I kind of think of what you're doing and what you've done is It's great for you because we're all forced in one way or the other, uh, probably more subliminally to take the 
the the root the standard route that got our parents where they are right, or, yeah um whatnot but i was told a pretty good analogy um and i like to think of it a lot um a lot of people follow the plow that's going through the cornfield mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but there's some of us that like to kind of make our own path through the cornfield to get to the other side. And I think that it's important to have a sense of individuality because it's so easy to get caught up in what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Um, and I think that's great for you. I, um, yeah. I, 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 you kind of alluded to something about, you know, everyone has this creative sense. And it's so true. I mean, you got to think like how many people had this, this passion, you know, that they, they just never let it show. And it's so much potential that's kind of gone to waste, whether it's a knowledge about sports, a knowledge about, you know, technology, you know, whatever it is, these people could be like geniuses internally and people will never know because they're just too scared to let that side of them show. And yeah, I think definitely. these outlets have really allowed people, you know, like you to really show a different side and put your kind of creative knowledge out there. Yeah. And that really is something that a lot of people don't really have the nerves to do. And it's, Hold, it's their potential that they're not really letting show full um, yeah. because they're kind of scared to do that, you know? Mm-hmm. I think too many people are afraid of, you know, what other people will think if they like, yes. put that out exactly. there. And then it becomes kind of analysis by paralysis and you just never end up doing it. I mm-hmm. think one thing that I don't do a good enough job of personally is, you know, I post pretty much every single day. But one thing I think I could do a better job of is being more proud of it and confident in it. Like something that literally comes to mind right now because it was so recent. It was literally yesterday um, out with friends at a bar and someone, uh, Joe, like who we were just talking about yesterday. um, uh, We were talking about just life and like jobs and things like that. And he's like, yeah, I saw it in your YouTube video and your – the video you posted like about how you know we're at this age and you need to be taking risks at a young age because you don't have so, as much to lose and things like yeah. that and it like creates like when I realized someone actually watched it I'm like oh yeah I, yeah like I really appreciate that you're saying that like you said you watched the video like that's really cool to me mm-hmm. but my immediate response is almost like a little bit of embarrassment and like I'm a little still much less than it used to be. Like I almost like didn't want people to talk about it, mm-hmm, right. but it's something I'm working on to be more, you know, proud of it in the mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. Um, but back to what I was saying with that creative outlet, like I, I pointed to Dave because you have kept up making music for so long. Yeah. You make beats, like you can go into depth on that more. And I think yeah, it's yeah. really cool that, you know, you have kept that in your life. Yeah. I would say uh, it's a great, like a release, so to say. Everybody has one, needs one. Um, Some people prefer to exercise. I should do more of that. But uh, having something where you can kind of just dump your emotions and your thoughts. um, And I'm a firm believer that music invokes emotion and thoughts and can change one's emotions. So to have that for me has always been really crucial to be able to create Mm -hmm. based on my mood or sometimes not know how I'm feeling and create and being to interpret how I'm feeling through what I created. And I'm throwing a lot out uh, at the camera here, but it's essentially, it just helps me express myself Mm -hmm. and kind of some ideas. But I will say like to kind of relate to what you're doing in the, uh, the being uncomfortable with being out there sort of aspect of it. I spent a lot of time making content for a company online and posting things uh, through myself and through their company. And, you know, people would always in high school say one thing or the other about like, Oh, look who it is. Like, Oh, what's going on? And at first, you know, you think, ah, they, they giving me a hard time or are they, are they supportive? Um, and that's, it, it, it's tough to interpret that, but I would say it, that's something you have to learn to forget because regardless of what it is, you're going to deal with it. And the, the more popular you get or the, the more known you get, you're going to deal with even more potential negativity, so to say, because mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot of people that are going to hate you for no reason. But then on the contrary, and often double or triple the amount of people that really like what you do. Um, and I think it's hard when we're so young and we're going through a time like I did it in high school where I was, you know, making stuff and trying to be out there more on the internet because we are insecure. But I think for you at this point in your life, you're not worried about, um, you're not worried about 
what people think of you as much as what you think of yourself and where you want to be. That's mm-hmm. at least what I get from my interpretation of the scenario. And uh, I think that's a great thing. And I will also say like, we can look back at ourselves as well and feel uncomfortable about our past or cringe about it, mm-hmm. but you I should be on that actually. You yeah. should be. I think if you don't look back on your past and cringe, that means that you haven't gone through a period of improvement. Yeah. Hmm. Um, because if you're not looking back on your past and cringing, that means you haven't necessarily Straight away. gotten better at whatever you're trying to do. Like I have so many out into the ether. If you really want to scroll through my TikTok all the way to the beginning, just like so many like horror, like do it. TikTok has a, a, a thing where it's like one year ago today, two years ago yeah. today, you posted this like and I'm like, Oh, like right. that was the worst thing ever. And yeah. for the immediate feeling is like yes. immediate cringe. That was the worst thing ever. But I look back and I'm like, at least I put myself out there and put myself in a position to get better at it. And yeah. in another year, I'm probably going to look at the videos I'm making now and be like, oh my God, yeah, we'll what watch was this I in doing? A year. Like, yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. And I think that's important. I got a question for you. Do you What's think up? when it comes to like your videos and stuff like that, this is kind of a, it's, it could be a metaphor for life in a sense. Mm-hmm. Do you see like, you know, I, I think like if you post a video and someone really like Joe walks up to you and he's like, I love your video, man. That was awesome. Does that mean more to you personally than someone like replying or commenting like this stuff is cringy? You know, I don't this is terrible, like bad take or whatever. Like does what like because me personally, I feel like the bad the criticism hurts me more than the good stuff feels good. Like I, when if someone compliments me, I, I don't think about that as much as when someone insults me. I think about insults way more than compliments. Yeah, I think that's – They hit harder for me yeah, at least. I think that's very natural. I think most people would agree and with that's you. Your, that means your internal, your internal conversations are healthy because if you're, if you're doubting yourself or if you're roasting yourself or criticizing yourself so much, you're probably comfortable with other people's criticisms. Mm-hmm. But if you're giving yourself positive reinforcement and confident – then naturally, to an extent, those comments will hurt. So I think sure. it's kind of a way of measuring your how you are doing internally. Um, that's just something I kind of thought of, but I think about it like that way because we also always expect the best. I mean, humans are innately optimistic. I believe so. Um, you really only turn pessimistic through experiences and trauma. Um, but I would say like we all expect the best and we're also a lot of the times naive to the worst. Um, Mm -hmm. so I could see where sometimes that makes you feel like I I could see that like this is a, a negative insult and this is how big it is and feels to you. And this is somebody's positive comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it's because we are so usually kind to ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a whole saying like be kind to yourself because sometimes we aren't, but I believe that we are. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we just expect we often expect the best in our head, and when we don't get what we are expecting, right. then we're disappointed. So I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, like, because we, we're, we're all golfers here, like, for example, I think, like, way more about a bad shot, and I take that way more personally than a good shot. Right. You know? Mm. Like, a bad shot, like, I'll be thinking about all night. But, like, I'll hit a great shot, and I'm, I'll probably just forget it. You know, I'll yeah, remember yeah. it, but, like, I won't talk about a good shot ne- in my head nearly as much as I'll think about a missed two foot putt. You know, right. I'll, I'll, I'll kick myself for, you know, miss two foot putt, but you know, I might not even think about the great shot and I won't give myself credit for it, but I'll be kicking myself for that yeah. bad one. I think you know? that's the natural inclination to have. And then I think then there's a, like, that's a natural shift people have in their mindset. Mm-hmm. But then from there, everyone's kind of individual in terms of how far they take that. So right. back to your original question to, for me, I honestly don't really, when someone comments like, this video is dumb or I did a, I just did uh, a draft grade reviewing the NFL draft for every single team. team and there was a lot of comments where it was just like yeah. this guy has no idea what he's talking about mm-hmm. this was so stupid this grade was horrible yeah exactly and none of the comments bothered me at all that's great um but at the same time then in like an in-person like compliment like oh I think it's really cool what you're doing with your videos or something like that I've always been someone, for whatever reason, I've struggled in my life to take compliments. Yeah. Not like I like get offended or something like that. I just, I struggle with how to respond. Uh, yeah. Like, I I, cause I don't want to be like, oh yeah, like I am so great. Like, exactly. like I never right. want the, res- I want to give off 
like gratefulness. Like, thank you very much for mm-hmm. saying that. And I say that, but sometimes they'll, they'll say that to me. And then I just, I feel uncomfortable and I don't know why that's something I have to just get better at. Mm-hmm. But, um, at least you're humble. Like there's yeah. a lot of people who take it the, the to the other extreme, you know, and, and they're, they're so the boastful, yeah. you know, and then people view that people see that and that's stuff people notice, bro. Like that's stuff that like someone will notice be like, this kid's so humble, you know, like this kid gets a reputation and this kid's get a reputation for not being humble. I mean, they'll, sure. they're boastful about that stuff and, you know, they'll, they'll shove their, their content down your throats and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, and I think there's a really healthy balance to that stuff. And I yeah. think it sounds like from what you're saying that you really have that and I, I don't know if I'd be able to deal with negative criticism the way that you explained that you're able to. Yeah, maybe that's part of it too where I don't want the negative criticism to get to me at all so then I don't really let the positive criticism so you're get to me either. kind of living in the middle almost. You know, yeah, and maybe I just need to do a better job of navigating that but that's something really interesting to think about and mm-hmm. along those lines I want to ask you another question um, of people having different personality traits. I think people... Some people need more of a creative outlet than others Mm -hmm. just because of the way their brain works. And I wanted to ask you, you know, what do you feel like your creative outlet is? Do you really have one and do you really need one? So I, yeah, so I'm, I'm, again, I'm a very like reserved type of person. Like I I don't let a lot of people see certain sides of me. And something you guys really might not know about me is I have a really creative mind in the sense that when I was a kid growing up, I would just have so much fun playing alone games with myself, you know, whether it's, I'd go in the basement, I'd make up a game, whether it's with, with hockey, I, you know, and I have these envisionments in my mind of Mm -hmm. I'm so-and-so player. And I'm, I set the stage of, you know, we're, we're at this arena and, you know, here's the score, here's the time. And I'm, I'm announcing in my head and, you know, or, you know, whether I'm putting or something like that, Mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever, whatever sport it is, not even a sport. I have a passion for aviation, you know? And so I have a bunch of model planes and, you know, each model plane, when I was growing up, I had a, I had a model airport in my, one of my rooms in my house and I mapped it out perfectly. I had all these routes established. I, I let my mind go to these places that I don't really let people see. And I, and that's mm-hmm. kind of my creative side of me. It's like, I really have this creative mind in my head. Um, you know, if I'm, if I'm at the gym shooting basketball, you know, or shooting, shooting, you know, playing pickup or whatever, I have this thought in my head that I'm like, whatever, in TD Garden, you know, like, look at me, I'm, I'm here. And I, I almost see it with my eyes. Yeah. You know, it's like my brain allows me to see these things. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of a creative side of me. But like, that's, that's not something that is with me on a day to day basis. That's almost like a side of me that people don't see. I almost keep it personal in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's kind of things that, you know, I, I love alone time. And yeah. my alone time is just me thinking I have, uh, I don't know what the, the word is, but like, I just have this, this, these visions in my head. I have a really wild imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, cool. And I just think that, you know, whatever, growing up, you know, I'd go out in the yard and I, I would throw a football at a tree and I'd pretend right. that I'm throwing a, to Randy Moss or something like that. Right. And I, I'm running around, I'm throwing, I, I have these envisionments yeah. in my head. Um, and I really never understood how to channel that into something productive. Well, hmm. I think that's a really cool, do you feel like you would benefit from channeling it into something productive or something more tangible or do you feel like with your personality you're completely that like muscle is flexed you're completely satisfied by keeping all that creativity not bottled up but in your own head because I I also feel like some people's creative outlet could be painting and they paint a whatever and no one else in the world sees it other than them and that is them getting their creative side out yeah I would like I don't I wouldn't all artists. Look down on anyone for Exactly. That. And that's a yeah. lot of what artists do, whether it's artists' music and, and, and literal physical art. I mean, a lot. this is people expressing their creativity. Mm-hmm. But I don't see myself – I almost like prefer to keep this as a personal thing. And I yeah. don't really know why because you could say like, yeah, like what if I made videos of blah, 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 blah. Like kind of like what you do. But mm-hmm. I don't really see myself benefiting off of that. Sure. I almost like having it to keep – it's not like I'm, I'm afraid and I'm, I don't want to let people see that side of it. It's more just like I like to have almost – I almost like having two sides to me. Yeah. Like I almost like having That's the, the, the outgoing. Like, yeah. yeah. It's almost – I don't know why but it's almost like I don't know if I would benefit personally off of that. It, I would not benefit. I wouldn't change. Nothing mm-hmm. would change. Right. You know, other than the fact that I'm letting this creative side of me show to other people and sure. that wouldn't change anything. But I just – it's almost fun for me to have these games in my head. It's almost like entertainment yeah. in a sense. I let my brain go to these, right these crazy places. Right. Um, 
but it, it is, it, it's weird to think about, you know, how people express their creativity. Mm-hmm. And I think you do like how you do it. That's, you know, everyone has their own way of doing it, I think. And a lot of people do it through social media. Sure. Yeah, and I would say like, it's not so much maybe if we pivot away from creativity and more, does everybody need a passion? You definitely have one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. it's like, you can be passionate about something that is creative, um, and you can be passionate about something that isn't creative, but I do think every passion requires a bit of creativity. Mm-hmm. 100%. Like, so like it's – for Zach, I think the question is more or less do you have a passion? Do you think it's something you, you would like to entertain as a form of uh, employment or one or the other or something – turn that into something productive? Mm-hmm. And that's obviously something he's trying to do. It's just some of us choose to be passionate about things that are more – creative or creative and some are of us like to be passionate about things that are more utilitarian Mm -hmm. or you know concrete um and less up for interpretation because like art everything that we do or you know all art is up for interpretation and that's kind of to your point where you said there could be somebody and there is people out there that'll paint something on a canvas and ninety nine thousand people will say like what the hell is that and mm-hmm. then there's one person that says oh that's a, a tree you know and it's like that's kind of what art is it's oh, like, yeah. i made this beat to sound like this and another he- person yes, here and be like what do you mean what are you talking I love about that. so it's like that's what it is like and i think a, a good question for zach and a good question for some people was like do you have not necessarily a creative outlet but more or less are you passionate about something and do you see yourself using that for the betterment of yourself and other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't think everyone just needs to start posting on social media like me. Mm-hmm. I just think the way my, the creative side of my brain works is I enjoy it a lot more when I can take something in my brain and then bring it mm-hmm. to life and make something more right tangible out of it. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that just is probably the way my brain works. All right, sorry for the quick cut there. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties, but uh, we're in a new environment now, and uh, we're going to start off. Dave, you had a very good uh, topic to bring up. Yeah. Um, I guess my topic, so to say, is how does our interpretation